is 20 to 7. The challenges facing the SNP seem to be mounting even higher, forced now to deny that they're facing bankruptcy. Alexandra McKenzie is our Scotland correspondent. It's an extraordinary position, Alexandra. There's leaks, counter-leaks, bits of um, um, uh, video of uh, Nicholas Sturgeon. What on earth's happening? Good morning, Justin. Yes, it has been a very busy weekend and Police Scotland, just to remind listeners, listeners has been investigating the SNP's finances for almost two years. The former chief executive, Peter Murrell, was arrested just less than two weeks ago. He was released without charge and the home he shares with his wife, the former First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, was searched by police officers. And yesterday, as you said, a video emerged that was in the Sunday Mail. It's believed to be from March 2021. That was before the police investigation. And Nicholas Sturgeon is apparently addressing the SNP's ruling body, the National Executive Committee, in a virtual meeting. And she's talking about party finances. She said the party had never been in a stronger financial position. She told members of the NEC to be careful about suggesting there were problems with the party's finances. She said they depended on donors to donate. She said there was no reason for people to be concerned about the party's finances. And yesterday, also in some of the papers, they suggested a very different story about the SNP's finances. The Sunday Times reported that the SNP's treasurer said in a meeting on Saturday that the party was having difficulty balancing the books due to a reduction in party membership and donors. And he said we need to find money to keep the party going forward. We did get a reaction from the SNP on those comments. They said that that they were very selective. We heard from the MP Ian Blackford, the SNP's former leader at Westminster. He told uh, the BBC that the party was financially in robust health. He said absolutely categorically the mm. SNP is solvent, finances are in balance. And you did mention about the, the SNP reports um, that they were facing bankruptcy. That has been firmly denied yeah. by Ian Blackford. And we're going to be talking to Mr Blackford later on. We're going to be talking to Mr Blackford later on. Just what, what's the impact of this on the SNP in Scotland at the moment? Yeah, well, it... it, it has obviously been in the news now um, for for a couple couple of weeks. We have got a new first minister, Hamza Youssef. It's been a very difficult uh, start for him, and there was a um, party national executive committee at the weekend, and they have approved proposals for an internal review of governance of the party and transparency, as well as the appointment of of a new chief executive. Peter Murrell had resigned following a row over yeah, the number fact, of members in that, the That's party. all the internal stuff. I'm just wondering more widely in, in Scotland, does this stuff cut through? Is there a kind of feeling that the party's in, a, in, in some sort of terminal decline? What's, what's the wider picture? Well, I think we do have to be quite careful what we say because the, there is a police investigation uh, ongoing. The, the Scottish Tory party over the weekend had called for the suspension of Peter Murrell and Nicola uh, Sturgeon. In terms of members of, of the public, it is obviously being being discussed. It was all over the papers yesterday. There were lots of front page headlines and before all of this there had been a significant drop in membership. There are around 70,000 members of the SNP now. It was at its peak of 125,000 in, in 20. 19 so so yes that significant drop in in party and party membership Alexandra McKenzie thank you